being in his presence again this morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. Well, God has preserved you all through the last week. That's why you are here. Yes, sir. I slept and I woke because the Lord sustained me. So when we say it's time to thank God, thank God indeed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God indeed. One rich man said, I will say to my soul, rest. God said, I, I, I take your breath from you today. Amen. And he did. You are here because he sustained you. I'm here because he sustained me. One more time, give him thanks with that sense of meaning. I thank you for the privilege to be in your presence again this Sunday morning. Thank you for preserving my soul. Blessed be your name. Thank you for a good hand upon my life. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Father, Lord, I pray that you will give each one under this service today an encounter of a lifetime. Amen. Let today be a certain day in everyone's life. Amen. Let it be a day to be much remembered Amen. in everybody's life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Take all the praise. Hallelujah. Satisfy everyone today with the goodness of your house. Amen. Open new chapters of favor to everyone's life today. Amen. It's our covenant day of business breakthrough. Let every form of breakdowns in anyone's endeavor, in everyone's endeavor, come to an end today. Amen. Make everyone to laugh Amen. by your awesome acts. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. That's awesome. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. The prophetic focus for the month is financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. Shall we say that together? Financial And the anchor scripture is Isaiah 51, verse 1 to 3. Hearken unto me, all ye that love righteousness, or follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hoeing, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, bear thee. I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all our waste places. Remember, Zion is a church. He will make our wilderness like Eden and our desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness only shall be found in her. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. So God is saying to turn your wilderness into Eden. Desert and my desert into the garden of the Lord. Where joy and gladness shall be the only thing we know. Thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. Abraham said, I will not take anything from you lest you say you make Abraham rich. I found the God that enriches. I will not let anything you give me corrupt the awesome wealth that God has is for me. So financial fortune is our heritage in Christ. Who for our sake became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. Second Corinthians chapter eight and verse nine. Who obtained for us a redemption Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Revelation 5.12. That's what makes financial fortune our heritage in Christ. He became poor to enrich us with his riches in glory. 
He went through the cross and returned triumphant and brought for us a sevenfold redemptive package that includes power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. That's what makes financial fortune our heritage in Christ. We've had some awesome takeoff at the Spiritual Week of Emphasis. Three pack teachings. I'd like to recommend that you please lay hold on those materials and then uh, run them over and over until they ro rub off on you. They are simple, powerful truths that will terminate the dry seasons in anyone's life. But our teaching series for Sunday services for the month is captioned, Gateways to Financial Fortune. Well, but it's important for us to know the purpose of God for empowering us for wealth. If you don't know the purpose, we stand the risk of abusing it. We understand from scriptures in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17. My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. So God is out to empower his people for wealth, for the spread of the gospel. Who among you saw the glory of this house in his first estate? And how do you see it now? I get chapter 2 and verse 3. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Verse 4. For thus yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, and Say the Lord and be strong, O Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest, and be strong, all the people of the land. Say the Lord and walk, for I'm with you, said the Lord of hosts. Verse 5. According to the word which I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remained among you, fear ye not. Now he went on and said, For thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once, it's a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea, and the dry land. And I will shake all nations. And the desires of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace. So it's for the shaking of all nations, before Jesus returns. So he has his budget and is looking for channels that he can entrust such resources into. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached among God's nations and then shall the end come. And it means this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached among all kindred. and tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. So every nook and cranny of the earth will hear the gospel before Jesus returns. And that requires enormous resources that God has and is only looking for channels through whom to channel it. One of the things that gave me so much rest in ministry is the reality, the scriptural reality of the fact that God has a running budget for every of his agenda. God will never, never depend on man to execute his agenda. He only looks for men that can take advantage of his agenda for, it, for their change of story. Awesome God. 
So the purpose is for advancing the kingdom of God on the earth. That's where Solomon missed it. A prophetic word came that Solomon was going to build the house, the temple of God. The Chronicles chapter 5. Now, 1 Chronicles 22, verse 9 and 10. Behold, the son shall be born of thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon. So he called his name, and I will give him peace and quietness. I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. Now, he shall build an house for my name. He shall be my son, and I will be his father, and will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Amen. So a prophetic word went ahead of him and God had to empower him for work to execute it. They didn't know the reason why. Or he had no adequate understanding of it. So work came. There is nothing wrong in enjoying God's blessings in your life, but you must keep minding the purpose. When you miss out on the purpose, it becomes a wreck. The wealth is converted to a wreck, as it was with Solomon. So Solomon built a gorgeous temple for God. Thank God for that. But the wealth kept increasing. And Solomon had nothing more to do for God, so he had to start doing for the devil. You know, nature abhors vacuum. And we are told in Scripture that Solomon built shrines for the gods and goddesses of his wives. And you know how many wives he had? The Bible calls it his strange wives. Solomon had 700 wives. And 300 concubines. And his wife turned away his heart. And so, Solomon built on the high place for Shema. The abomination of Moab. And in the hill that is before Jerusalem. And for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, that is wives and concubines, which burnt incense and sacrifice unto their God. So he built a thousand temples for the devil. He built one for God who empowered him for the purpose of building temples. Now, God is once again coming down to build the later house. And he has vowed to raise financial giants for that purpose. May no one miss it this time. Amen. The same way Solomon built a thousand shrines, many on the side of my voice today, by the empowerment of the covenant. In fulfillment of this end time agenda, we we'll build a thousand churches to Christ. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? It may not be in your hand now. It was in the heart of my father, David, to build a house to the Lord. Somebody testified just now. <laughs> and God said, Thou do it well that it was in thy heart. When it's in your heart, you always do well. When it's in your heart to promote the kingdom of God, you always do well. You always do well. Where you are today, notwithstanding, you always do well. When it's in your heart to advance the kingdom of God, God will keep advancing your life to meet what is in your heart. If it's truly in your hand, it will soon be in your hand. You won't beg anybody for it, sir. So I didn't know that scripture. I didn't know it, but let me tell you what I did. Years ago, I said to God, if you ever bless me, 
I want to be part of building churches for you. I didn't have a bank account. But my heart was pumping after God. Amen. Amen. You always do well. You look, a genuine kingdom dream is a highway to a financial boom. Genuine kingdom dream is the highway to financial boom. You always do well. Always. Always do well. Always do well. Always do well. Always do well. Not collecting things, but letting go things. I met a lady here, she finished her master's. So, and he said, sir, you don't know me? I said, I can't remember. He said, I was the lady that was coming from a construction site that you pack your car and said, how are you? Why are you not in school? I didn't know her. I didn't, I've never seen the face in my life. He said, I have to define my address, I mean, my admission. I said, what university are you in? He said, Covenant. Covenant? So I said, wait. So I wrote a note to register. I'm responsible for the school fees of this girl. I never saw her till she finished master's. Because, I, you know, it's not easy to see me. Because of the kind of job I do. Praise God. <laughs> the same way I met an associate professor. He said to me, sir, I've been on your scholarship since I was 14 years old. I met someone today who's a professor here. He said, you sponsored me when I was in Ife. Did I know him? No. Somebody jumped on my neck at one conference in London, and I thought maybe something went wrong. <laughs> and I said, what's that? He said, I was on your scholarship. I'm not a medical doctor. I practice here in London. It's not for consumption. You know, some people just don't have. They are just working in ignorance. God will never prosper a man beyond his commitment to being a blessing. Glory to God. Amen. This your consumer's mentality must have put you where you are. You need to loosen up. Praise God. You need to loosen up. My family has built quite a number of churches by his grace from his supplies. Praise God. And we are still doing it. And we are on forever. Praise God. Amen. The purpose of kingdom wealth is for the advancement of God's kingdom. That includes promoting the kingdom of God on earth and the well-being of mankind as you are able. But the interesting thing about this covenant thing is you can start from where you are. There's no harassment. You can start from where you are. Today, five naira is a sacrifice at your level. Tomorrow it becomes 50 naira. Next tomorrow it becomes 100 naira. Another time it becomes 200 naira. And suddenly, like a dream, it became 1,000. That you can give 1,000 a sacrifice and help somebody and help, you know, be part of advancing the kingdom. And tomorrow you are buying a chair, a whole chair, a whole chair. You alone. 800 naira. Praise God. And then next tomorrow you say, How many chairs do we need here? They say 100. Please bring me 100. Because it's in your heart. It's in your heart. You know, black is not synonymous with lack. People think they are poor because they are black. No, because we're ignorant. It's because we're ignorant. We have never received a dime from any foreign nation in running this commission. Never. Why? The same God over all is it unto all that call upon him. There's no difference between the Jews and the Greek, between the white and the black, the yellow and the brown. The same God. The same God. If you understand the purpose and you engage with the terms, where you live is irrelevant. It will make a way for you in the wilderness and rivers will be flowing in your desert. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Purpose is power. You need to understand the purpose. You can imagine Solomon just building more and more temples across the towns and cities of Israel. Amen. All his life. 
David was serving God all his life. When God said, you won't build a house, he said, can I buy materials for it? He said, carry on. His greatness came out of his heart for God. It is the size of our heart for God that defines our level of greatness on the earth. Gateways to financial fortune is first to appreciate the fact, I mean, the purpose of God for wealth. A passionate pursuit of God and the interest of his kingdom is key to a world of supernatural abundance. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey and serve him. Psalm 102 verse 13 to 15, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor our year, the said time is come, because... Thy servants take pleasure in the affairs of your kingdom and favor every demand thereof. Therefore, the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and not the kings of the earth thy glory. Therefore, serving God and the interest of his kingdom with one's financial resources is gateway to a world of financial fortune. Let them shout for joy that favor his righteous cause. Let them say continually. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let the Lord be magnified that continues to take pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Have you considered my servant Job that is not like him on the earth, my friend? He was bragging on Job. And Matthew 6, 33, seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that the world is dying to get shall be added to you. He said to Abraham, from the place where thou art, start from where you are. Look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see unto you will I give it. We can start from where we are. And be consistent in your covenant war. The story will keep changing from one level of glory to another. Amen. It's also important to know that covenant wealth cannot be achieved. Covenant wealth cannot be acquired by human skill. Covenant wealth is only entrusted into the hands of the faithful. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches. So, covenant wealth is committed to our trust. It's not our achievement. It's committed to our trust. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in your righteous mama, who shall come to your trust the true riches? That's why I say God is looking for channels through whom to release his own silver and gold for building the later house. When he finds you faithful, he begins to release to the level of your faithfulness that will keep you on course. So you don't go and marry 700 wives <laughs> and 300 concubines. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know God does not tempt people with evil. So he blesses to the level that you can, have, you can handle and that is safe for you to make heaven. When those things consider it safe, it limits the level of 
political name thrust into your hand. But it's important for us to know this morning that God empowers us for wealth on the basis of his covenant. Not our views. So we must come to terms with the terms of his covenant for empowerment for wealth. The first question is, what is the covenant? I tried to define that over the years, but one simple thing is this. A covenant is a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. Hello, come in, I have this package for you. You are interested, these are the conditions. <laughs> I have this package for you, you are interested, these are the conditions. Let me tell you how God brought me to this encounter. It was an explosion. February, I mean, uh, March 22nd, 1982, I was out on a search for the secret of kingdom prosperity. I hated the poor that was sitting on the church of Christ. I wanted it off in my lifetime. And I came across my mentor who has a deep understanding of the visions of the law concerning prosperity with proofs. The man of God, Kenneth Copeland. And I'd read his books. So I took the same books I read, The Law of Prosperity, and goes with his prosperity that was written by his wife and my Bible and went on a three day fasting and prayer and searching. On the third day, the heavens came down on Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember it is the Lord your God that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. That is unto thy father as is this day. He said, My son, David. Now, behind every word of scriptures is the voice of God. Amen. Amen. They call it Rema. My mouth it has spoken it, and my spirit it has gathered. So there is the mouth of God behind every scripture. So I heard them say to me in very clear terms, my son, David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. So it does not answer to prayers. My prosperity plan is not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant. And until your part is played, I am not committed. Ooh. It has not been edited or re-edited. I had it straight from heaven, sir. I never read that in the book. Then, what is the covenant? Why the earth remains? Seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter shall not cease. With this covenant, except my covenant be not with the day and with the night. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 20 and 21. If I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven, then may also my covenant with my servant will be broken, that I should not have a son to reign instead. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. That means with the redeemed of the law, because I've been redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth. So my covenant is binding as my covenant of the day and of the night. Until the day and the night. Stop changing position. Then my covenant remains in force. Then he now said to me humorously, every time you wake up in the morning, you look up in the sky, you see the sun, know that my covenant is in force. You look up in the night, you see the moon, know that my covenant is in force. It's for that time I stood up and screamed and spawned like a cocoon. Yeah, I can never be poor. Why? I found it. So, <laughs> the covenant for wealth comes along with responsibility of embracing the demand of seed time and harvest as a lifestyle. Now, simply, a covenant is, this is my plan, and these are the conditions if you're interested. So when you meet the conditions, Attached to any promise, it graduates to a covenant. Graduates to what? Covenant. When you meet the conditions, 
attached to any promise of scriptures, it graduates to covenant. So we have the old covenant, we have the new covenant, that's what the Old Testament. The two are ratified into one by Christ. If you want to go from sin to sin, my friend, you be addicted to fellowship. Everyone that appears in Zion, they go from strength to strength. There is no way prayer can substitute that. There is no way fasting can substitute that. You want to be healed of any disease? Your faith has made you whole. No faith, no healing. No faith, no healing. No faith, no healing. You want to stay healthy, keep serving God. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, he shall bless thy bread and will, and I will take something away from you. Keep serving God. In truth and in deed, and productively. And then it takes sickness away from your system, you begin to live a healthy life. Every provision of scriptures has conditions attached. When you meet the conditions, the provisions have become a covenant between you and God. You can't back out of it. You cannot back out of it. If you, they will obey the terms of the covenant, as they serve him with their resources, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Job 36 verse 11. What is seed time and harvest? In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 and 7. But this I say that he which sweats spiritually shall also live spiritually, and he which sweats bountifully shall live bountifully. So every man according to as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. So sowing and reaping is giving and receiving. No grudgingly, no of necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. So giving is sowing. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Now, Philippians 4, 15 to 19. You Philippians know that in the beginning of the gospel, no one... No church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving. Now, can I tell you this? Churches are ordained to be given platforms. Churches are givers, not those individuals. So every church minister should know that your church should be a giving church. Otherwise, it will be a begging church. Amen. Yeah. Every church is ordained a giving church. No church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but he only. For even in Thessalonica, he sent once and again to my necessity. Giving is a once and again demand. It's not once and for all. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Every true minister is after the change of story of the people that are sent to him. They are not after themselves. Paul said, I will spend and be spent for you. Even though the more I love you, the less I belong. I will very gladly spend. So every genuine minister is spending their time, energy, and resources for the change of story of people that are sent to them. Not collecting from them. Not looking at what they have. Not taking advantage of them. Praise God. Amen. A woman sold a sacrificial seed of a car to the church. But I don't know why, but I, I was asking, who parked this car here? They said, somebody. I said, let me see the person. And I saw her. She was a widow. I said, how are your children going to do? He said, no, the Lord will take care of that. I said, now, I'm standing on God's behalf to put this seed back in your hand. Amen? Amen. God has received it like he received Isaac. And Abraham returned with him. God has his, and the blessings that is attached to this sacrifice will find its way to you. When he came back, I think about six months after, shouting for the blessings of God upon his life. So we, we are no consumers, sir. No. No. No 
church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving. So giving and receiving is sowing and reaping. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Let me hear your loudness. Amen. Amen. Well, very importantly, it's, it's, it's good for us to know that the covenant is superior to all prevailing economic situations and circumstances. Whatever can stop the day and the night from exchanging position can never make the covenant of wealth non and void. Can never. Always, forever, superior to all negative economic circumstances. We saw in the land of Egypt that money failed. In the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan. Genesis 47 verse 15. It was so gruesome that at a point they say we have nothing more but our bodies. Buy us. It was so bad. Wherefore shall we die? Verse 19 before their eyes. Both we and our land. Buy us oh, and our land for bread. And we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh forever and give us seed that we may live and not die. It was so bad. At the same time covenant people that decide in the same country of Egypt in the county of Goshen they had possessions they are in, and grew and multiplied exceedingly. That's to tell you how powerless economic situations are. On covenant people. Can I share this humorous thing with you? We have never had a financial setback in nearly 40 years of ministry. It will be 40 years in May next year. Never. And you can ask how many economic casualties or catastrophes, sorry, have taken place in this country. Not one. What? I'm telling you the truth. Not once. We have never cut salaries once, once, once in this world. I no, no, the way the things are. And we have never borrowed. Ooh. No overdraft from any bank. What? No contractor supplies being owed. How? Covenant. Is superior to all harsh economic circumstances. Psalm 33 and verse 18 and 19. The word says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. The fear of the Lord is to keep his commandment. Walking in the covenant keeps you alive in famine. Alive, bouncing. Alive, shining. Now the same Psalm 37 and verse 18 and 19, the two are so easy to remember the same two verses. The Lord read the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. What is happening by time irrelevant? They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the evil time. That's why people are giving testimonies under lockdown. Yeah. Testimonies of breakthrough under lockdown. Yeah. In the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Not oh, they shall eat. They shall eat it when they are satisfied. Amen. Amen. When we were kids in the village, after food, they say, are you satisfied? They say, no. <laughs> they say, and your tummy is like this? <laughs> Children are never satisfied. So when say, whether you are satisfied or not, you are not eating again tonight. <laughs> You shall be satisfied. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with him. My faith in him has never failed. I'm satisfied with Jesus. Now, let me tell you this. I, I know some will be angry, some will be happy, but whichever you choose is okay. <laughs> this ministry. 
has been absolutely satisfied with Jesus. May 2nd next year, 40 years. 40 years. Absolutely. The go for me to that Dickens house has never come out of my mouth. Go check for me that MD of that company. If anybody came to you, he's a, he's a, he's a demon. He, he, he's representing the devil. I've never sent one man in my life. One man. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with him. My faith in him has never failed. I'm satisfied with Jesus. That's your new realm from now. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All our covenant fathers in scriptures went through economic challenges triumphantly. There was famine in the days of Abraham, but he became very rich in cattle and silver and gold. Genesis 12:10. There was a famine in the land. Genesis 13, 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. There was famine in the days of Isaac. And Isaac was going to run. God said, no, stay here. And Isaac sold in that land in that year. And received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him in famine. And grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, the greatest employer in the land. And the Philistines envied him. Amen. Amen. In the days of famine. And in verse 16, hear what happened. The king of Gera came to Isaac. Go from us, for thou art much, much mightier than we. He was mightier than the nation. And then, verse 26, Abimelech went to him from Gera. He has left them. And now who's that? One of his friends. And fight Chor, the chief captain of his army. Hear what they said. Isaac said unto them, what are you looking for here? Say ye hate me, and have sent me away from you. Ah, they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with you. Economic power. <laughs> and we said, let there be now an oath between us, even between us and thee. And let us make a covenant with thee. That thou will do us no harm. Military might. Military what? Might. Economic power. Military might. Vested in one man. And all in the time of famine. Something is breaking forth in your life. Amen. And there was famine in the days of Jacob. You remember? Genesis 42, verse 1 and 2. And Genesis 43, verse 1. Jacob was importing food for his family. They were going a second time. He said they should go with double money. In the days of famine, they were only bothered about where to buy it, not with what to buy with. That's the supremacy of the covenant of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No matter the heat and the burnings on the earth, you will never feel the heat. Amen. Now, he said in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16, verse 17, in that day when I make up my jewels, or, or when I unleash my wealth on the earth, I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return, and the son between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. For behold, the earth, the day cometh, that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. In the day that cometh shall burn them up, Said the Lord of hosts, 
that he shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name, that walk in the covenant of tithing and having God's kingdom at heart, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow as calves of the storm. That is, you'll be advancing. Praise God. Amen. You'll be growing up Amen. in the day when the world is burning down. Amen. That's the supremacy of the covenant over every negative economic circumstance. Somebody's told is changing. Amen. So keep at it. But they that fear the Lord speak often one to another. Malachi 3.16. And a book of remains written on behalf of them that fear the Lord and thought upon his name. This situation is hard, but it cannot make God's word of no effect. Amen. Amen. Let's keep obeying God. Let's keep serving God. Let's keep walking the covenant. And then we'll be out there triumphantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is somebody blessed? Yes, sir. So covenant practice is the key to a world of financial fortune. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. If anything came across to you right now, give him thanks and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. One of the mysteries of the kingdom is that it operates on keys. After Peter confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, he said, neither flesh nor blood as you be this will go Father which and I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys. So the question is, what is it that is interpreted as key? Luke 11, verse 52. Jesus speaking to the lawyers of his days. What to you, lawyers, because you have taken away the key of knowledge. You shall not enter in, and those who want to enter, you hinder them. Key of knowledge. Now, I did this during the week, um, Isaiah chapter 5, and verse 1 to 13, how the Lord um, planted a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. He first is and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it to watch out against any intruder and also made a wine press therein and he looked that he should bring forth grapes and he brought forth white grapes and now inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah judge I pray thee between me and my vineyard what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it. Wherefore, when I looked that he should bring forth grapes, he brought it, he brought forth white grapes. He said, now go to, let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the edge thereof that I'm wasting my resources for. And it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof. It shall be thrown down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged. But there shall, be, there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will also command the clouds that they rain no more. day. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the man of Judah is pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment and behold oppression. For righteousness and behold a cry. Now watch what he said in verse 13. He said, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. So knowledge is key to realizing our full potentials in redemption. Knowledge is key. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, according to the divine power, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So we can only assess it through revelation. Through revelation. I commend you to go into the word of his grace. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. He's able to build you up. And give you 
An inheritance, your inheritance is only accessible by knowledge. Revelation. So let's look at biblical keys to business breakthrough. If you have your business items here, put it underneath your seat where you are sitting. On the floor there is sanctified as a holy ground. Amen. Amen. And take hold of this key because everybody is returning with the master key today. You see, the master key to business breakthrough is a heart for God. What is it? Yeah. You keep doing well with a heart for God. Under all prevailing circumstances, you keep doing well with a heart for God. Always, all the time, every moment. You always do well with a heart for God. First Kings chapter 8 and verse 17. It was in the heart of my of David, my father, to be in the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said, David, to, to David, my father, whereas it was in thy heart to be in the house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thy heart. And you can see how well he did. Amen. Amen. Unusual greatness. That is still speaking up till today. Jesus still holds the key of David in his hand. Every time they call him thou son of David, the anointing just, whoa. Awesome God. Now, quickly let's run through this. First, one must be born again to become a member of the household of God, which is a breakthrough family. Say with me, the household of God, God. is a, a breakthrough family. We are hearers of God and join hearers with Jesus. We are no longer strangers, but now members of the household of God. Ephesians 2.19. And that family is redeemed a light of the world. Our city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Light of the world means a pathfinder. A trailblazer. Set on a hill means you don't look for him in the valley. Always on top. This is one description of that family, Matthew eleven eleven. 11. The Bible says, When there is unto you among them that are born of women, there is none, there has no reason, are greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. So it's a family of giants. Amen. Amen. The household of God is made up of a family of what? Giants. Amen. And you can only be enlisted as a member of that household when you are born again. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 7, really I said to you, you must be born again. It's not an advice. It's a must. Otherwise, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Number two. In these last days, supernatural breakthrough shall be the core identity of every child of God. Core identity. Psalm 87 clearly defines that. Verse 1 to 7. He said, his foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion, the church, more than all the dwellings of Jacob. How do I call that the church? 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. Ye are come to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to the, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of men, just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the head of the church, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling and speaking better things than the blood of Abel. So every time you see Zion in the Old Testament, he's talking about the church in the New Testament. Can I hear your amen? amen. His foundations upon the holy mountains, the Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of, his, of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee. So they be speaking of us. Amen. 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 The same way they are speaking about your church. Every great thing attracts attention. So it takes a strong position to, to have opposition. Amen. Amen. Somebody lost election. Can you have opposition? <laughs> no. It take, you know, the Lord said to me, he said, persecution is a proof of your strong position. He said, when? 1992. It's a proof of your strong position. If you don't want to be backbitten, stay behind. Because backbiting is the lot of frontliners. You don't buy people from the front, do you? You buy them from behind. So if you don't want people to backbite you, then settle with them at the back. And join them in backbiting those in front. Opposition any day, any time is a proof of your strong position. And the Lord shall count when he shall write up the people that this man was born dead. Went back to verse 5. And of Zion shall be said, this and that man was born in her. And the highest himself shall establish her. <laughs> That's the days we are living in. And the Lord shall count when he writes of these people that this man was born there. As well as the singers, as the players of instruments shall be there, all my springs shall be domiciled in Zion. That's why I said it shall be the core identity of every child of God before Jesus comes. You are part of that. Amen. Now hear this. Daniel 7, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole level shall be given. Not shall be acquired or achieved to the people of the saints of the Most High God. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. That's where the world is heading before Jesus comes. The Lord said unto my Lord, see that my right hand shall make the enemies their fools too. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Hallelujah. Throw down yes. in the midst of the enemies. Thank you, Jesus. That's God's agenda. There is no force under heaven that can stop it. As I spoke about Jesus coming, his death and his atonement, 500 years before he came. God's agenda cannot be stored by man. Thank you, Jesus. But every breakthrough in the kingdom is tiered by word encounters. Word encounters. Arise and shine because your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness. People with the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and their kings to the brightness of thy rising. 
Verse 8, who are these that fly as the clouds and as the doves to their windows? Verse 22, a little one among them shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Praise God. Amen. Supernatural breakthroughs, they are triggered by encounters with the world. We labored all night, we caught nothing. Now, let down your net for a drought. And when they had this done, they enclosed great mud of fishes and their nets break. They beckoned on their friends to help them. They filled the two boats with fishes and the boat began to sink. Net breaking, boat sinking order of breakthroughs is triggered by the world. So what do we do to command supernatural breakthroughs? One, continue to seek first the kingdom of God. Continue to seek first the advancement of the kingdom of God. To maximize the breakthrough package in redemption. Matthew 6, 33. Be committed to the covenant of personal and corporate tithing, and don't, don't slaughter me on that. <laughs> Only your personal tithe guarantees your access to an open heaven. We saw that Malachi 3, 6 to 18. But also your corporate tithing or business tithing opens heaven or your business. And so I heard God say to me, the tithe that Abraham paid 4th of September 1987 was not his own personal tithe, but the tithe of his company. 318 men went to war, brought down the spoil, brought home the spoil, and paid the tithe of all. And said, the same way I opened the heavens over the life of individuals through covenant practice, I also opened heavens over companies, corporations, businesses, including churches. That is one of the messages behind this commission today. You will not know dry seasons anymore in your business. Amen. You will not know dry seasons anymore in your business. Amen. You will not know dry seasons anymore in your business. Amen. John D. Rockefeller, of blessed memory, the first American billionaire in history, was a title from the first paycheck of his life. While he was about turning 52, he was accosted with the plague of cancer. And the doctors haven't tried their best, said, well, we cannot guarantee you're saying your 52nd birthday. So he parted with 50% of all his takes to bless humanity. And God said, ah, if you die, how many people are like you? Live on, Jerry. He lived to be 93. Before he died. The larger your heart for God and the interest of his kingdom, the longer you live. The longer you live. The longer you live. The, that's not Abraham, that's not Jacob, that's John D. Rockefeller. His story is all over the place. It's not that, uh, uh, how do you know that Abraham prospers? Amen. He one time gave 140 million US dollars to the education fund of his church. 140 million US dollars. He was serving God practically. He was church warden three times. In spite of his status. The main committed to kingdom advancement sacrifices as enabled by God. Make joy and rejoice in your lifestyle so you don't destroy your harvest and your blessings. Joy chapter 1 verse 11. All the harvest of the field is perished because joy is withered away from the children of men. 11 and 12. Because they serve not the Lord their God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, therefore shall they serve their enemies whom the Lord shall send against them in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in want of all things, and it shall lay a rod of iron upon their necks, Gilead has destroyed them. God forbid. 
Let joy and rejoicing become your lifestyle. And then, recognize that everything multiplies by thanksgiving. Everything multiplies with thanksgiving. Therefore, Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In everything give thanks, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, what is the will of God in Christ concerning you? You have need of patience, but Hebrews 10, 36, that after you have done the will of God, you may obtain a promise. Now, listen to this, and I'm speaking now to the youth in particular, and any struggling adult among us. Honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment of the Lord with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou, thou mayest live long on the earth. No matter how wealthy your parents are, you owe them a covenant responsibility of honoring them with precious gifts, so you can provoke the blessings of the soul over your life. Genesis 49, verse 22 to 26. Very important. Please listen to me. Joseph is a fruitful bough. Even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. Wherever Joseph was, he prospered. As a slave, he prospered. As a prisoner, he prospered. Now, the archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him, his brothers, and they hated him. But his bow abode in strength on the arms of his Hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From hence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Now, even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee? And by the almighty God, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above? One, the blessings of the deep that lie beneath, by showing you amazing things that you know not. Two, the blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessing of motherhood, the blessing of motherhood. For the blessing of thy father, number five, has prevailed in your life about the blessings of all your generations gone by. Can I get your amen? amen. So God recognized the places of the blessings of motherhood and the blessings of fatherhood. Over to you. He said, bring me the venison such as I love, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Make me a savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee. You want the blessings of the soul, honor your father and your mother. It will keep being well with you. When they threw Joseph in the whole, the blessings of heaven above, the deep, the light beneath, the blessings of the breast and of the womb, the blessings of the Father prevailed. They sold him into slavery. He became the heir of Potiphar's house. The blessing. Got to the prison. He became like a staff, management staff of the prison. Whatever was done in the prison, it was the doer of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And finally, he got to Pharaoh and became the father of Pharaoh. So God has made me a father to Pharaoh. The blessings. The blessings. The blessings. Mind it. And God will mind you. I was privileged to offer a seed to my grandmother. I was 20 years old, and I bought a little breakfast table and chairs. And she said to me, you brought this for me? I said, yes, ma'am. You shall be great. You shall be great. 
I had those walls at 20. Something's breaking forth in your life. Amen. Now let's conclude. Connect with priestly blessings because God confirms the word of his servants and performs the counsel of his messengers. The blessings of God came upon Abraham through Melchizedek as he gave that tithe on behalf of his company. You know, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved. So today is your day. No more business stagnation. Amen. No more business frustration. Amen. You are breaking forth on every side Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You belong to a breakthrough family. The family of Jesus. You are redeemed to be a light to your world and not a concern. You are redeemed as a city set on a hill. Not somebody that needs to be pitied. They pity only people that are in the pit. You are not to be pitied, you are to be envied. We, brethren, like Isaac, we are children of promise. And Isaac was envied, not pitied. You are not to be pitied, but to be envied. And the envy can find any kind of expression, some brutal expression, whatever it is. But you keep making your boast in God. It's your tongue. Amen. You will know it from today. Amen. Your breakthrough testimonies begin from today. Amen. People are stagnated without a job. You are having your breakthrough now. Amen. People whose job are hanging on the line. You are having your breakthrough now. Amen. People whose business are dying and stinking. You are having your breakthrough now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Somebody has just found a way to go right now. Thank him for it and receive grace to go. Receive grace to go on the path he has shown you right now. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Very quickly you are here in this service. And you know that the foundation to all of these things we're talking about is new birth. Until you are born again you cannot become a member of that breakthrough family. So wherever you are you like me to pray with you for your sins to be forgiven. For you to become a child of God. Or you want to be restored back to the faith. You want to dedicate your life to Christ. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive me, forgive me. All, my sins. all my sins. I believe, I believe. you died for me. Died for On the third day, the you rose again rose that I may, I may be justified. Right now, right now. I, believe right now. I believe my sins are forgiven me. I'm justified by your blood. I'm, by your blood. I'm, saved. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Child of God. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you. for saving my soul. Saving my soul. By, your grace, by your grace, I will serve you all the days of my life. Of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. The same grace that brought you into the faith today will keep you for life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Welcome to this breakthrough family, Amen. the household of God, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please send us your testimonies. We'll be glad to be part of your joy on this new fun journey. You'll never miss your steps, in Jesus' name. Now take up your points of contact and stand to your feet. Now, there are people who are working in the covenant, but there are horns of the Gentiles that's resisting their breaking fall. Yes. Amen. In Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17, he said, My seat is through prosperity, and yet be spread abroad. Then the Lord showed me four horns. And I said, What are these horns you have to do? He said, These are the horns that have scattered Judah and Israel. That no one did lift up the head. Then he showed me four carpenters. And I said, What are these come to do? He said, They have come to put together what the horns of the Gentiles have scattered. For every covenant child that's been resisted by the devil and his agent, I decree your liberty today. Amen. For everyone that's genuinely in pursuit of God and the interest of his kingdom. 
I decree your release from every form of captivity today. Amen. For every covenant practitioner that is still struggling for survival, today is declared your day of breakthrough. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I speak blessings yes. on those points of contact. Yes. Lift them up to heaven. I speak the breakthrough blessings Amen. of heaven. Amen. The blessings that cause men to prevail where others survey. I release it Amen. upon the works of your hand today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know what my God said? That whatever you do, it shall prosper. Whatever. He's a carpenter. He's a pure water seller. He says firewood. Whatever it was, it shall prosper. Whatever it was, the covenant delivers on every kind of legitimate work. Every kind. No, thieves can't prosper by it because the cause of the Lord is upon the house of the thief. And no scripture counsel is the other. Amen. But every legitimate engagement is covered. Whatever he doeth. It shall prosper. Whatever I do. Therefore, I decree that every walk of the hand of every one of us under the sound of my voice today begins to prosper in a new dimension. Amen. You have brought this under this breakthrough anointing. Well, not one person will lack a testimony this week. Amen. Somebody's testimony is knocking today. Amen. For anyone who will receive this, because every time the water is fear, steer, anyone that first steps in, if 100 steps in, bow, they are made of whatever disease. If 1,000 steps in, bow, they are made of whatever disease. When you are running a race, there is no law that only one person can be forced. If you arrive there at the same time, you are all forced. Amen. Amen. Every time this water is there, everyone that first steps in, I said, this week you are yes. having your first breakthrough testimony. Yes. You are having your first breakthrough testimony. Yes. Somebody's job is arriving today. Amen. 